Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. I'm curious about. I'm curious about. I'm curious I'm about. Curious about. I'm curious about building open, authentic, loving relationship. I'm curious about jealousy. I'm curious about polyamory. Does it just mean that you're fucking all the time? How can I tell my parents that my partner is already married? I'm curious about... How do you know when you're too busy to have another relationship? I'm curious about dominant and subordinate relationship. I'm curious about sexual health. How can relationships, How can relationships evolve, evolve with people evolve as they grow and change? Grow and, change. Mm. and I think the whole thing just got romanticized. Again, on brand. Romanticized in Europe, capitalized in the US. <laughs> Welcome to the Curious Fox podcast for those challenging the status quo in love, sex and relationships. My name is Effie Blue. And I'm Jacqueline Misla. And with Valentine's Day a few days away, Effie and I are going to dive into the history of V-Day and how the holiday has impacted how we view love, relationships, value and the myth of the one. We couldn't do a Valentine's Day episode without challenging the status quo. And while this is not quite an anti-Valentine's Day episode, we're going to invite you to consider a new way of looking at the holiday and designing a celebration or not that is right for you. Okay, so before we shit all over Valentine's Day, <laughs> do, you, do you have any fond Valentine's Day memories? Uh, yeah, I have some. I also like how we say we're it's not going to be anti Valentine's Day. We're not going <laughs> to shit all, but we kind of are going to shit all over Valentine's Day for a little bit, but just a little bit. <laughs> well, but this is, I think it. We're gonna no. Let let's we're gonna shit over the prescription of love that Valentine's has sold us, and then we are going to take it and redesign it. For our own liking. That's what we do with everything. Exactly. So that sounds right. Exactly. Yeah, no, we're on point. I feel like we're doing our job. So <laughs> right. onwards is what I say. <laughs> and yeah, listen, it's not all bad. I've had some really fun Valentine's Day experiences. Um, I have to say none of them has been with one other person. Meaning none of my favorite Valentine's Day have been a a couple of them affair actually now i'm reflecting on it hmm. i've had some really fun valentine's day parties where mm -hmm. friends have got together and just like you know went back to the to the original <laughs> roots of valentine's day which i will tell you all about in a minute mm -hmm. uh which is you know fun and games for everyone and i think other than that i just feel like it's a other than those experiences where we made it special by gathering in community i think anytime it's been just me and one other partner it's been kind of an anticlimax i'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. yeah what about you same actually i was gonna say i don't i mean i'm sure that i've done lovely dinners and i'm sure that i've gotten flowers and candies and all mm -hmm. the things and i honestly don't remember that much what i do remember is growing up my dad used to always bring my sister and myself and my mom something on valentine's day mm -hmm. And I don't know why that struck me because that's not crazy, but my dad is like a union rep, like city worker, yeah. very like just hardworking guy. And there was something about him coming home at the end of the day with like his dirty hands from working, you know, all day. Yeah. And and in his hands were like these little bags of chocolates and, mm -hmm. and, t and stuffed animals. And yeah. I don't know, there was just something that was so endearing about that that no matter the year no matter how old i was like this was like through to my 20s i'm sure that if he saw me on valentine's day now he would still give me something but it was just like a thing that i could count on and it was like a really special memory for me so yeah it wasn't romantic that's what's really interesting yeah yeah i'm gonna say i like that it's not romantic it's like marking a moment and sort of saying here are the people i love in my life you know rather yeah. than romanticizing it i think that's where it gets muddled when you kind of add all those parts to it, like romanticizing and capitalizing on it. And we'll talk, we'll, you know, I will do my nerdy piece and give a bit of a background on it. But I like it. That's just like marking him, him marking here, are the, here are the people that I love in my mm -hmm. life and everybody gets something. It's kind of nice. 
But I think after that, once I started dating, it just became terrible. <laughs> it was either like we have to do so, like the pressure to do something, or then like the the pressure not to do something, mm-hmm. like anti Valentine's. But yeah. then there's still a part of me that like kind of secretly wants to do something, even then I want to do like an anti Valentine's Day something. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? Like let's watch horror movies and whatever. Like yeah. there is still something inside of me that like wants to note that the world is doing something or at least mm-hmm. you know the the united states is doing something and so like i want to do something too somehow mm-hmm. this year we are going to go to the bronx zoo with my daughter oh that's great that's such a great idea yeah yeah you see this is what i mean this is good i commend you on that decision mm-hmm. um i'm going to be flying on valentine's day this yes. year so that's how i got away with that one <laughs> 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 like anybody in my life that's expecting anything i'm sorry i'm gonna be on a flight everyone love mm-hmm. you i should say that before again as we are spending at least a few minutes talking about what we love about valentine's day before the shit fest begins let, <laughs> let me also say discounted candy the day, the day after, after valentine's <laughs> day <laughs> is amazing uh-huh. i'm sure Yes, yes, exactly. You can get some really nice expensive chocolate mm-hmm. for half the price because it's a red heart um, packaging. Yes, it's true. Yes. Okay, so let's let's nerd out for a second. I, I need to know, you have alluded to me before this moment. I have resisted going on Google and searching for myself <laughs> because I wanted to hear it with everyone else. But Effie Blue, can you tell us a little bit about the origin story of Valentine's Day? Sure. Actually, I don't think people really know exactly, but historians have sort of looked back in in the past and sort of looked at similar rituals around the same days. And a few things collide um, around the same time of the year, which is the Romans, so they'll be pagan. The the feast of, I think it's uh, Lupercalia, I think it's called. And it's like a weird feast where men killed, sacrificed goats and dogs and then whipped women with the hides of the animals. Hmm. And like that was a whole ritual. And again, it was for fertility. And women were, like, were lining up to get, it wasn't like, you know, grabbed women and just randomly whipped them. Women were actually lining up to get whipped because they believed that it was like some sort of a fertility ritual. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was also, it was also a communal affair. So it was a feast. Mm-hmm. And of course, Romans, they drank a lot and got naked. They were like uh, matchmaking, like a essentially like random matchmaking was happening. They would just put everyone's name in a jar, in a Roman way, of course, maybe in a goblet. <laughs> 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 um, they put everyone's like room stones in a goblet, uh, and uh, they were just like paired up randomly, and they were paired together during the feast. If it was, like, it was just like random matchmaking, and if it was, if they got on, they could stay together. If they not, at the end of the feast, they could like walk away. Mm. But during that time, they were like match made randomly. I love that they're like, this is what makes people fertile. Not all of the kinky sex that we're having tonight, <laughs> which will probably produce some children. That's right. not actually what's producing the children. It's somehow the ritual. Yes, yes. So, I mean, again, very pagan, very Roman, which I kind of like the idea of. I think also Nor- uh, Normans were also celebrating something called i think Ga- galantin day and it mm-hmm. sounds similar so i think that might also got muddled up and galantin is a uh, lover of women so mm-hmm. again like something around um same theme around the same time of the year unknown why um was happening so i think that was also happening also a, a debaucherous holiday mm-hmm. and then of course the uh, the christians came along and they marched in and they ruined the fun they made everybody <laughs> put their clothes on <laughs> 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 like everybody you can keep the day but you keep your clothes on everyone's like oh okay so i think that that, that happened i think it also has some like Straight up murder was happening. There were executions. Mm. Some emperor executed two men, both named Valentine, in two, two different years. And the Catholic Church honored it by celebrating St. Valentine's Day. It's like a weird, dark, bloody roots as well. Mm. And I feel like, and I would need to go into Google this. And if folks in the, if any foxes out there know, know any of these stories and want to share with us, please call in and tell us. But I feel like one of the Valentines, the jailed Valentines, like it within jail was also connecting people or like mm. there was a guard that was in love with someone and they like passed notes or something like that. It was very, they were also matchmaking. 
Yeah, so there's some there's something around like I mean love and fertility, I mean, even from the pagan days, I think it goes back to love and fertility, but I, I kinda like how it's actually kind of fluid. How it also is there's a difference between like it's a matchmaking holiday, a time of matchmaking versus you already have a match, then you're celebrating mm. that. And I think that's kind of interesting. Mm. And I think the whole thing just got romanticized. Again, on brand, romanticized in Europe, capitalized in the US. It was romanticized in Europe <laughs> by Chaucer and Shakespeare in their writing. And then it was capitalized in the US by Hallmark <laughs> around, um, like, I think, like 1913, as they started to mass produce Valentine's Day cards. Which again, very on brand. I, I love how this like this right. holiday. Everyone just played their position. Right? <laughs> the Romans like we, they got naked, they got drunk, they created some festivals. The Christians then came in and were like, "Everyone, put your clothes back on." The Catholics killed some folks and then honored them. Yeah. The Europeans like wrote romanticized versions of the story, <laughs> and then the U.S. was like, "How can we make some money?" Exactly, exactly, mm. which I love. I, I, and then like the, the poor Valentine's Day, now I have sympathy for it. It's like, <laughs> listen, I'm just hanging around trying to connect people and make babies. <laughs> like you're taking advantage of me. So I, that's kind of what's happening with Valentine's Day across the years. And today, though, today it's an 18.7 billion affair. Wow. It's huge. It's highly capitalized. It's huge. And this year in New York, uh, the city is actually opening the restaurants for yes. inside seating for the first time in a mm -hmm. year on Valentine's Day because it is the number one day for restaurants. Yeah. So in order to just like help them out a little bit. Yeah. Indoor seating opens on mm -hmm. February 14th. Book mm -hmm. your tables, people. Yeah, yeah, or don't, or don't, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's kind of crazy, and we're kind of feeding into the 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 capitalization of it all. Personally, I think it puts a lot of pressure on people, unless you're getting drunk and getting naked in community. <laughs> um, I think your other option ten tends to be either really focusing on the couple, and it can be really hard to kind of pause everything and like draw in your couple and, and somehow celebrate regardless of what else is happening i think it really romanticizes coupledom and it puts pressure on the relationship it really sort of puts up these arbitrary standards and makes it in a way that you get to compare your relationship to others or compare to your relationship to literally hallmark cards mm. i think that's worth thinking about and talking about also i think it makes it hard for people who are solo flyers or single or, or solo, whether there's like solo poly or, or like straight up single. I think it makes it hard for them to, it's, I guess I actually, it's exclusive. Like it excludes them. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think it really excludes all other relationships other than, other than the dyad, which I think given that there's so many different types of relationships and that they, the relationships come in sa sh all shapes and sizes, it really just like, it's the day that, the dyadic relationship is the most heavily prescribed is what I guess mm. I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, because it, you're right. All cards, all commercials, all things are like for the one, for yes. the most important person in your life. That becomes challenging because then mm -hmm. even, even the most practiced ninja level polyamorist mm -hmm. can still potentially have some hurt feelings sure. on this day when you don't feel prioritized or cared for or seen because the noise outside is really loud i was just gonna say it gets the noise gets really loud on valentine's day on this stuff mm -hmm. and you can like you said you can be ninja level yoda of mm -hmm. relationships and your sense of self-worth and you know trust and faith in your relationship and your uh, partners but like the noise is loud mm -hmm. and it feels really obtrusive. Like you're not, you can't get away from it. It's there. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from it. It's everywhere. Uh, you just need to like, I don't know, look at your phone or walk outside your house or go into CVS to get, you know, Advil. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. I remember that this was a few years ago. My wife and I had said like, oh, we don't care about Valentine's Day. And frankly, again, and I think I admitted it here, it, I, I often be like, I don't care about that thing, but like, I kind of care about it. <laughs> But not caring about it feels still like honoring it somehow, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so like, I was like, all right, well, I'll meet you after work and let's go do some 
anti Valentine's Day mm. things, like, mm-hmm. right? And so I went into the city and was just like kind of hanging out on my own and thought to myself, like, I'm going to do my own thing and like take care of myself a little. And then when she's out of work, we'll meet up and we'll like laugh at all the couples who really care, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she texted me and said, hey, I am going to go grab a drink with her other partner at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. Okay, mm. sure. I mean, that's fine. And so I was like, oh, so you guys are going out for Valentine's Day? And she's like, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we're going to grab a drink, but I'm you know, happy to meet you. And then they're grabbing a drink. And then she texts me. She's like, hey, we're just going to go get some dinner since we're already out. And I was like, OK. Now, mm. she and I hadn't formally made plans. In my mind, I had crafted this whole like evening of anti-Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. And then I, but I felt really triggered because I was like, oh, she's going out with her on Valentine's Mm. Day and not me. You see? Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I ended up going to a poly event. I ended up going to like some coffee shop event with a bunch of like, you know, non-monogamous folks who were like meeting each other. And it wasn't a, it wasn't like a romantic event. Like it wasn't a meet and greet in that way. It was just more like a conversational thing but i thought all right let me let me try to be around some people so i Mm -hmm. won't be on on my own and let me like distract myself and do something for me but my point is i walked into that day being like this day doesn't matter and Mm -hmm. we're gonna show them and then by the end i was like she went out to valentine's day with somebody else and not me (laughs) yeah you see like Mm -hmm. it's hard it's hard because these things come through you know, like the, the beliefs, the narrative, like doesn't matter how much you, you, you try, it just seeps through. And if you're like being all strong and resolved, right. like it doesn't, it just gets through. So it's hard. It's hard. I actually think Valentine's Day could be, or I think it's an opportunity for it to be rebranded, to be a self-care day, like mm-hmm. be your own Valentine. Mm-hmm. Really like treat yourself as if you would treat your Valentine on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that I can really get behind. We have a prescription for exactly how we're supposed to treat our Valentine's on Valentine's Day. Like it's years of being told. So maybe it's an opportunity for people to go take that prescription, say, thank you very much. Thank you. It gives me some guidelines and then turn it on themselves Mm -hmm. and really kind of, you know, spend an evening with yourself, baths, you know, whatever feels good. And connect with yourself, you know, soothe yourself, take care of yourself, really think about how much you value yourself and um, spend spend a day being your own Valentine. I like that. I mean, I think in the same way that we can understand the origin of other holidays, of Christmas, of Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. which is incredibly problematic, mm-hmm. of other holidays that, that you may celebrate either because of your culture, because of your religion, because of your location. You can still understand the context. You can reject some of the context in history and still decide, I'm going to use this as an opportunity, as a reminder to focus on something else, focus on myself, focus on my relationship. I remember you shared when you were traveling, there would be the call to prayer several times a day. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And that you wouldn't necessarily leverage that as an opportunity to pray, but you would look at that as an opportunity to take a moment for yourself or to have gratitude. The same is true, you know, with Valentine's. It has such really horrid and violent origins and understanding that instead of rooting our celebration in a context that's, you know, part of a false narrative, that we really can decide, well, this day is going to, I'm going to take it back. And it is going to be about gratitude and it is going to be about family. It is going to be about, you know, visioning for for the future. We've talked about the same thing as it relates to New Year's and Mm -hmm, right. right. So like, this just feels like another reminder and opportunity Mm -hmm. to say there, you're going to be surrounded by noise. And if you have the ability to tune it out, good for you. Mm -hmm. And if some of that noise seeps in and you feel like, oh, everyone's doing something, I need to do Mm -hmm. something or I need to acknowledge it in some way, then do that. Like do that and don't unapologetically. Right. But design it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like figure out what you want to do as a as an individual, as a couple, as a triad, as a as a communal group, whatever your, Mm -hmm. your relationship construct. So I'm wondering if you can give some thoughts for the solo flyers and then maybe mm-hmm. I can give some some ideas for those who are in partnership and and we can see what we can co-design together. Yeah. I mean, I think, again, first and foremost, like take the day for yourself, be your own Valentine like that, I think is a really nice default option. And like you said, I think 
it's really hard to tune it out. So why not tune it in and, and do the thing that you want to do? So spend, you know, spend the day treating yourself and honoring yourself. I think that's great. Um, the other option is swing hard the other way and go celebrate in community, mm-hmm. uh, invite people together, not this year, don't gather this year, <laughs> um, be outside, go for a walk, mm-hmm. wear masks, but a- any other year where you can gather um, people, maybe gather people to be together and celebrate in that way. Or connect with more than one person, you know, maybe create a Zoom meet, you know, a Zoom experience for all the people that you love. They don't have to be romantic love, but people that you love. Um, you can celebrate your friendships and your lovers or any other kind of relationship with people that you love in your life. You can gather those and celebrate with those. I think those are really good options for for solo players. Like either celebrate yourself and celebrate your relationship with yourself and be your own Valentine or gather all the people that you love in some way that is safe this year honor it honor that relationship honor that love honor that connection that you have with them i would say that sort of the two ways that that i think solo flyers can really make a day of it Mm -hmm. yeah i like that and i think honestly i like the idea of doing a mix so i'm going to share some ideas potentially for folks who are partnered in some way i really like spending some time on your own first Mm. And then potentially doing something with a partner or partners Mm -hmm. because it, it minimizes the expectation that that person has to feed all everything in your tank. Mm -hmm. And so if I did a little celebrating, if I listened to some music that I love, ate some food that I love, did something that fills my tank a little Mm -hmm. bit, then it puts less pressure on this other person and on this dynamic or on these people to like fill that part of the tank for me. Mm Mm-hmm. And so if you if you aren't into the whole Valentine's Day thing and still want the opportunity to celebrate something, because honestly, nowadays I will take any excuse to celebrate anything. Anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to celebrate. Yes. Opening of a beer can. <laughs> yes. Anything that I can celebrate. I got some plants recently and I was just thrilled about it. and wanted to like have a party about the plants. But consider this your invitation to develop something new, something unique, your own tradition. We did an episode, episode 48, which was the holiday clusterfuck. We did that Mm -hmm. right before Thanksgiving. And so tune into that right after you listen to this episode, go to episode 48, because you're going to find some ideas there around how how to create a new holiday tradition just for you, Mm -hmm. for your partner, for your partners. That was a really fun exploration, like a brainstorming session. But a few things that I, that I would say is start with things that you love. Don't think about it just in terms of love of the partnership, but if you love art, if you love music, if you love movies, Mm -hmm. are there ways that you can incorporate things that you love outside of the love of yourself or your partnership or your Mm -hmm. family and, and just really make it a celebration of love Oftentimes when I'm trying to like reconnect with myself because I have felt like either I've been absorbed by work or by the task of the day or my relationships, I will go running and I will list the things in my mind that bring me joy. Really simple Mm. things like bubbles. I mm-hmm. love bubbles. Like mm-hmm. when little kids blow bubbles, I want to yeah. pop them too. Mm-hmm. Or and like those big bubbles when you have like those yeah, big, I love those yes! big bubbles. Yeah. I love that. I love things like jumping rope or hopscotch or like things that get me. I love dancing. Mm-hmm. I love Greek food. I love Thai food. Like there are things that I just know belong to me. Mm-hmm. So I would want to like think about make that list for yourself and be like, mm-hmm. how many of these things like creatively can I incorporate? Mm-hmm. Can I have some Thai food and watch the color purple and then blow some bubbles? Like, is that a th- is that an evening that I can have? Because that sounds amazing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And rooted in that is is one of the things that I start to do, particularly around actually holidays and birthdays, is I start to think about what do I want to feel versus it? What is what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. And then that's the conversation that I have with my partners. And then together we can co-design what we want to do based on how we want to feel that evening. Mm -hmm. And that really was rooted in nonviolent communication and the distinction between needs and strategies Mm -hmm. that oftentimes we approach our partners with a strategy and say, let's get together tonight and let's cuddle up and watch a movie as opposed to the need, which is I feel disconnected and I, I need some closeness. 
Mm-hmm. And then together you can say, well, let's cook dinner or let's watch a movie or let's play or whatever that is. So uh, now I say, you know, for my birthday, for a particular holiday, I'm going to think about this for Valentine's Day. Like I want to feel close or I want to feel lively or I mm-hmm. want to feel introspective or I want to f- whatever it is. And then they say how they feel. And then we're like, oh, what can we create together mm-hmm. that will produce those feelings? For sure. And then the, the last thing, and we talked about this in episode 48, is, is about starting a new tradition and trying to do that around the love languages. Mm-hmm. Like thinking about what is your what is your most common love language that you use and that you receive, and then maybe trying to flip it on its head or lean into them or think of new ways of celebrating that. Yeah. So that's kind of how I'm approaching it this year. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I also would invite people to go back to the very, 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 very roots of um, the holiday and see if we can find a way to come up with non-capitalized ritual. Dinner and wine is is sort of the version of it where you're paying twice the money as usual. It's what everybody else is doing. It's what's being prescribed. But really, it's, you know, in its roots, there is ritual and there is, you know, nature and 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 that kind of stuff happening. And I'm wondering whether also figuring out your own rituals is helpful. Is it more spending a a day in nature or connecting with, you know, having a spiritual experience on that day, really focusing on connection that isn't about bars and restaurants and and presents and cards you know can it be more of a spiritual experience um, if that's what you're looking for if connection is what you're after and i i think ultimately what people are attempting to do through the prescription on valentine's day is connection of some mm-hmm. sort connection um some sort of representation of love some sort of a validation of a relationship is i think what it boils down to um and this one day really epitomizes those needs like it's this on this day i want to be sure that this person loves me and uh, and that our relationship is solid and we're good you mm-hmm. know it just feels like that's what valentine's day demands out of people or or I, that's the headspace that it brings people into you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to get away from it, but you also don't have to buy into it, literally Mm -hmm. buy into it. So really thinking about what are some rituals that feel authentic to you that really align you with how you want to feel, like you said, and what are some of the creative expressions of that, that isn't about the chocolates and the meal and the wine and the cards and the pink red hearts. So that would be my other sort of thing to throw in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you're, if you're going to buy into it, don't buy Hallmark. Well, now Hallmark is not going to be a sponsor of ours. So I've just ruined, I've just shot ruined. ourselves up there. I know. Yeah, ruined our livelihood. Yeah. But instead, go to Etsy and find like an alternative card shop that's really mm-hmm. handmade, drawn and beautifully amazing. Find mm-hmm. a local chef that can make a meal and drop it off at your door so that you mm-hmm. don't have to, you know, worry about eating outside and, and amongst other folks. But you can still have a lovely meal. Like mm-hmm. figure out if if because when we talk about this as it relates to non-monogamy and monogamy, if monogamy is right for you, beautiful, like live yeah. your best monogamous life. Go forth and thrive and still design your relationship so that it works for you so this is not about fighting the man if you're like but i like what the man has to say right (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) then that's great like do that but can you figure out other ways to to not to decommercialize it for yourself Mm -hmm. and figure out again As you're if you're listening to this and you're like, yes, this resonates for me, like Romans, naked, drunken sex and (laughs) decommercialization. And you're like, yes. Right. Before you go off, like preaching the the gospel of anti Valentine's Day, have a real conversation with your partner, partners or friends or the folks who are in your life and figure out what it is that they want. Because mm-hmm. celebration looks really different for different folks. So, for example, with me on my birthday or a holiday, my ideal world I would want to open my eyes and be just like surprised by all of the balloons and the flowers <laughs> that are surrounding my bedside that were placed there in the middle of the night before I could see. And I'd want to wake up and then I, I glide into the living room and there's like this beautiful brunch breakfast that's ready for me and an agenda of all the activities that are planned, right? Like I would love to be really taken care of and thought of and indulged in that way. And for me, the roots of that is I, I spend 
my like every day <laughs> taking care of other people. My job is to take care, you know, is to work with with individuals and companies. And I'm a mother. I'm a partner to two. And so, so much of what I do is taking care of others. Mm -hmm. And I would love on certain days just to be completely taken care of. And that particular scenario sounds like hell for my wife. Mm -hmm. She wants to be left alone. She mm -hmm. wants quiet. She, ideally, she'd want to be on the beach, maybe sitting next to me, maybe all by herself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But frankly, she has to do so much. She, like me, is doing so much for people during the day that she actually wants very little human contact, like mm -hmm. wants just to be on her own and to be self-reflective. So when I woke up, you know, on a particular morning and it was my my birthday and there were no balloons or flowers, no agenda of the day. I was horrified. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, there's a distinction in our family. We talk about golden rule versus platinum rule mm -hmm. that we've been taught the golden rule. You treat others the way you want to be treated. Platinum rule is that you treat others the way that they want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And so each of us on her birthday was making a big deal. On my birthday, she wasn't making enough of a deal, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And we were doing golden rule and we had to have a conversation about that. And so use this episode as a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. Go to, to whomever and say, hey, did you know about the origins of Valentine's Day? Like, that's mm -hmm. great. What do you think about Valentine's Day? Like, what would you do ideally? What would you want to feel that mm -hmm. day? And what kind of stuff do you love? Do you want to create your own tradition? Use this as a prompt to start the conversation so mm -hmm. that you don't assume that the way that you feel about the holiday is the way that other folks feel about it. And it's also what a beautiful conversation, you know, what a beautiful conversation to have with a, with, with a partner or partners to really get to know them, to understand them, to understand why they feel the way they do. There's so much like intimacy and sharing in that conversation. So absolutely. And then take cues from what you've just heard. Mm -hmm. And I think not necessarily sticking to special dates for celebration is also something that's worth considering. You know, Valentine's Day is one day a year, right? You're not going to celebrate your you celebrate your relationship one day a year. It makes no sense. You are for the the rest of the 364 days. You are still in that relationship. You are still in with those partner or partners. You are still showing up or not, uh, and you can't just take one day to really like cram everything in all the appreciation all the celebration all the ritual all everything into one day um when everybody else is doing it as well i mean i think it's a great start it's a great one to like really touch base on but i think from that really think about okay well if you can do it once a year can you do it once a month hmm. can it be a thing that you really prioritize once a month with you know if you're with one partner if you're with multiple partners you know, one partner each, or if you're in a situation where you're a, a group, get get together all together, you know, that that you celebrate your love and your connection. We talk a lot about these like state of the union slash check-ins to do every month. Also a celebration once a month, really like celebrate the people, love, relationships once a month. Why not? You know, wh why does it all have to be crammed one day? I mean, and I think especially if you have people like you and your wife where they have different ways of celebrating mm -hmm. could be one, you know, one month the way that you want to celebrate and another month the way they want to celebrate and another month where you gather all your partners together or whatever works for your relationship configuration. But if we are celebrating love and fertility on this one day, you can celebrate that once a month as well, mm -hmm. because it's an ongoing expression of your love and your relationship. Yeah. And I think it's an opportunity for us to redefine fertility too and what we want to bring and, and bear mm -hmm. into the world. So those who have decided they don't want to have children or, or can't or those who are um, asexual, asexual, right, exactly, or aromantic, like those who that's not a part of, then think about what else it is that you want to fertilize and birth into this mm -hmm. world. If it is your work, if it is your impact, if it is your contribution to the world in some way. And maybe it's about love and honoring that. I think that mm -hmm. this episode is really just helping you revisit the origins of these holidays are mixed by the culture, by the timeline, by the people mm -hmm. who are practicing it. And so then why are we allowing anyone to prescribe what it means for us and what we need to do? Exactly, exactly. So, if, you know, if it's relationship by design, then it's up to you how you how you design, what you design, how you celebrate, what holidays you honor and what other alternative days that you can come up with and how you can bend some of the existing cues mm -hmm. to the way that you're living your relationship so like we said everyone the world is celebrating that's a cue for you to be like oh yeah let's do something special and figure out what that special thing is mm -hmm. for you yeah 
that's really all there is to say about Valentine's Day because in a way we also don't want to make that much of a deal of it because you know it's just another day mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's true I remember others in your life you know remember my story of my dad giving me mm-hmm. gifts and if you have little ones who are watching you start something fun with them yeah. teach them a new way begin to change their the noise around them so that they don't grow up in 20 years thinking they gotta get some fancy table and some overpriced candy let's break the tradition break the tradition mm-hmm. change the noise hashtag yeah. change the noise hashtag break the tradition i know will you be my valentine effie any day all day and twice on sundays <laughs> 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 that is i'm up for that one yeah. um as long as we don't have cards or heart-shaped chocolates unless no, the day it's after, after Valen- <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the day after valentine's day and then we'll eat them all <laughs> yes please feel free to send us candy the day after valentine's day we will gladly <laughs> So before we leave, I feel like you have a soapbox moment. I do. So every now and then we use this as a platform to get on our soapbox and talk about the things that make us mad. Yes. I have a soapbox moment. I want to know where is everybody on Instagram? (laughs) I mean, I see you all there. You're all there, but you're not on our Instagram. And let, let the, I need to back up for a second. I know that we're getting, coming to the near the end of the, pe- the episode, so I won't take up too much of our time. I want to start by saying we are not people who are looking for follows or likes or validations right. for our own like ego or like the number of likes doesn't help me sleep better at night. Right. And Instagram is like a it's like the new resume. Right. It's the new business card. Right. You check somebody out on Instagram and you're like, mm, they seem credible. They right. seem real. If someone has like 50 followers, you're like, hmm, mm-hmm. who is this person? <laughs> right. Are they real? What's going yeah. on? They have no posts. They have three posts. Yes. Is this person real? And so as a community, as a business, as an organization, we really want to illustrate the impact of our content and our community and our connection. And we have, I don't know. 30 plus thousand listeners on Mm. this podcast. I think it's like 15,000 people Mm. on our emailing list. Nobody loves us on Instagram. And Instagram, where have you gone? You're listening, you're reading the newsletters, (laughs) but somehow you go to our Instagram and you may like a picture and you'd be like, yeah, but I'm not going to follow you guys. Yeah. And we just want to know why. Actually, I don't even, you don't even need to follow us. In fact, do not follow us. But DM us and say, you know why I chose not to follow you? Because of this. Yeah, you're not cool enough. Right. Maybe it's our pictures. Maybe it's our content. It's just like a reel in my mind. Because there are other folks that I see with like four posts that have 39,000 followers. followers. Yeah. And my brain just wants to understand, frankly, because I think I'm old school. I come from the school of you do hard work you put your head down you do good work you do hard work Mm -hmm. and you reap the rewards of that Mm -hmm. and i've done that in my life and personally in my career but somehow instagram (laughs) damn you (laughs) i can't and my personal i think i have like 500 or something feel free to follow me or not follow me i actually it, it doesn't matter if you if you come on you'll see my thoughts and some cool resources and tools and pictures also some hot pictures Oh, sometimes, saying, sometimes. But curious fox, I like we we got some real good things to say there. Yeah. And if you are enjoying this conversation, if you've if you checked us out on Facebook, if you have taken the open relationship quiz and joined our mailing list, then you are getting access to some of those things. So why not get them on into I just I just don't understand you. No. <laughs> I just I don't understand any of you. So don't follow us. It's fine. I don't even care anymore. I don't want you to follow us. <laughs> I just want to know why. I want to know where you are and I want to know why you don't like us on Instagram. Fair enough. That's my soapbox moment. That's sad. I feel I sad. I feel sad. <laughs> but, um, I ended this on a sad, sad note. and desperate note. Yeah. I mean, this, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We think we they think, like we we are loved. We get questions. Yes. We get we get messages. This is we what get I emails. Mean. I feel like we actually get more DMs than we have followers. Like we have so we answer so many questions. I'm gonna start checking the DMs. 
DMs and see if people are following us and be like, why are you not clicking yeah, the button? For sure. And it's just strange. And honestly, the only reason why it keeps coming up for me is because people who we work with, collaborators, sponsors, mm. educators, will visit our site and will say, oh, you only have like 2,000 followers. That's yeah, really surprising. Right. That's sad. And I think I'm just over that. I think that's what's exasperating yeah, it is that the number doesn't matter to me, but clearly the number matters. Mm. And because it matters, people are like, huh, that's weird. And I'm so now I'm like, what's going on? Nah, here? Yeah, no, I agree. Also, uh, we have issues with, well, not issues. We struggle with Instagram policies. Yeah, shadow banning. Um, and shadow banning, all that kind of stuff. And really the only answer seems to be uh, follower numbers. Yeah. Like we've reached out to so many people. I think we, men we mentioned this in a previous episode. We get shadow banned because we talk about things that challenges the status quo because mm -hmm. that's what we do. And we're not going to stop doing that. So um, what gets us out of that? <laughs> you yelling to like the Zuckerberg. So <laughs> <what's happening right laughs> yeah, like, hear me, Zuckerberg. <laughs> we're not going to stop. Um, He's like, oh, I've been listening this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the reasons. I mean, yes, because it's a resume these days and we have technical issues in the back end. Yeah. We are being told really the only way through is growing our numbers. And mm -hmm. so we are now, for the first time in our lives, considering our numbers on Instagram. I know. Here we are. Here we sure, are. Sure, sure. So if you do want to follow us, follow us on Instagram. No, don't follow us. Do, <laughs> no, not, do, do not. not go to We Are Curious Foxes on Instagram. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do not follow us on Curious Fox. We're over we are Curious Foxes. We're do over not it. go on We Are Curious Fox on Facebook. Don't do it. We'll be there, but you're not going to be there. Sure. You should actually go to We Are Curious Foxes, our website, though. You should. That, that I'll you say. Should, yes, yeah, that right. you should go on. Instagram, fine. I'm over it now. Yeah. I feel rejected. But I will move on. It, we've discussed it. I will sit in discomfort. I will learn from it. <laughs> but you really should go to our website. We have just updated it. You can search now under categories of love, sex, and relationship if you want to look for things about jealousy. If you want to explore things about family, mm -hmm. if you want to look for things about pleasure or sexuality, you can look that up and all the blogs mm -hmm. and the podcasts and the things that we've created about that content will pop up yep. just for you. I'm so, pretty impressed. Yeah. Come and check out. Yeah. Don't worry about Instagram, but check out our website. If you would like us to dive into a particular topic on a future episode, you can share your curiosity with us by emailing us or sending us a voice memo to listening at wearecuriousfoxes.com. Or you rec record your question for the show by calling 201-870-0063. If you want to connect with others and check in with the other foxes, if you want to see what we're doing, if you want to catch up on the latest blog posts or podcast episodes, then you can visit us at Instagram at wearecuriousfoxes.com or Facebook at wearecuriousfoxes.com. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page because we like options. And so you can join those groups, see what's going on. And we invite you to come on to Patreon and be a supporter of the Curious Fox community. You get exclusive events. We haven't even been doing events, but we're doing them for Patreons. We have podcast extras. You have opportunities to ask podcast guest questions. You get Ask Me Anythings with Effie Blue and a whole lot more. So go on to Patreon and get a behind the scenes and some extras as a member of that community. This episode is produced and edited by the only person we want to send a Valentine's package to this year, Nina Pollock. Our intro music is composed by Dave Saha. We are grateful for their work and we're grateful to you for listening. As always, stay curious, friends. Curious Fox podcast is not and will never be the final word on any topic. We solely aim to encourage curiosity and provide a space for exploration through connection and story. We encourage you to listen with an open and curious mind and we'll look forward to your feedback. Stay curious, friends. Stay curious. 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 Stay curious.